know that insulin resistance, a condition often silent and unnoticed, affects millions globally? Have you ever wondered if your body's response to insulin could be telling you more about your health? Hello, my name is Caroline, and today we're exploring the world of insulin resistance. Stay tuned as we break down everything you need to know about insulin resistance, its impact, and why it matters to you. The journey of insulin resistance starts quietly with invisible changes in our bodies. This can be the bad news, as its silent nature means many don't realize they have it. But do not worry prematurely, as familiarizing yourself about insulin resistance early means you can act to prevent or delay it. Imagine high carb foods such as gummies. You eat them and they break down into glucose or what is known as blood sugar. Your pancreas then releases insulin, the key that unlocks your cells to let this sugar in for energy. In the case of insulin resistance, this key starts to struggle. Your cells don't respond effectively to insulin and your pancreas has to work overtime and produce more of it. Over time, the pancreas cannot keep up and it leads to hyperglycemia, elevated blood sugar level, setting the stage for prediabetes and potentially type 2 diabetes. But here's a crucial point. You might not feel any different during this process. That's why regular health checks are vital. Insulin resistance develops over time if certain factors like dietary or lifestyle choices are in place. It may happen to anyone, overweight or not, and regardless of how healthy they might look. However, the silver lining is that insulin resistance may be reversed if appropriate steps are taken. Understanding insulin resistance is one thing, but knowing what causes it can empower us to take preventative actions. Let's get into the causes and risk factors that play a pivotal role in the development of insulin resistance. These factors include an inactive lifestyle, certain diets, genetics, older age, environmental factors. Firstly, let's talk about lifestyle. Our daily choices have a significant impact. A diet high in simple carbohydrates, especially refined sugars and highly processed foods, can increase the risk. Lack of physical activity is another major contributor. Remember, our bodies are designed to move. When we lead a sedentary lifestyle, we miss out on the benefits of exercise, which includes improving insulin sensitivity. But it's not just about what we eat or how much we move. Genetics also play a crucial role. If you have a family member of type 2 diabetes, you might be more predisposed to developing insulin resistance. It's like a genetic lottery, but being aware of your family history can help you take proactive steps. After genetics, it's important to consider the impact of age. Insulin resistance becomes more likely after the age of 45. This increase is partly due to changes in our skeletal muscles as we age. These muscles are highly impactful in glucose metabolism and insulin sensitivity. With aging, there is a decline in muscle function, and due to the increasing oxidative stress, inflammation, and age-related muscle cell changes. These changes can impair the muscle's ability to use insulin effectively, elevating the risk of insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. And let's not forget the environment around us. Certain environmental factors can increase our risk. These include things like chronic stress, lack of sleep, and even exposure to certain pollutants and chemicals. There are many environmental pollutants and chemicals that are linked to development of insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. For example, bisphenol A, BPA. This chemical is commonly found in plastics, including food containers and water bottles. BPA can leach into food and drinks and is considered an endocrine disruptor. Studies have shown that BPA exposure is associated with a higher risk of diabetes and other metabolic disorders. A second example would be air pollution. Particulate matter and other pollutants in the air have been studied for their impact on insulin resistance and diabetes risk. Chronic exposure to high levels of air pollution may increase inflammation and oxidative stress which can contribute to the development of these conditions. It's a complex interplay of lifestyle, genetics, and environment that determines our risk for insulin resistance. But here's the good news. By understanding these factors, we can take steps to mitigate our risk. Identifying insulin resistance early is crucial, but it can be challenging since it doesn't often present clear symptoms initially. Let's explore the common signs and the process of diagnosing this condition. Insulin resistance is sneaky. It often goes unnoticed, but there are signs to watch for. The first sign is increased waist circumference. A waistline over 40 inches in men and 35 inches in women can be a red flag. 
Secondly, we have high blood pressure. Readings of 130 over 85 or higher should prompt further investigation. Thirdly, abnormal blood lipid levels are also a sign. This includes high triglycerides and low HDL cholesterol. Fourth, skin changes, such as dark velvety patches of skin known as acanthosis nigricans and skin tags. Eventually, three P's of diabetes are also an alarming sign. Polydipsia, or excessive thirst, polophagia, for excessive appetite, and polyuria, or excessive urination. While these symptoms can guide us, they're not definitive. That's where medical tests come in. Diagnosing insulin resistance involves several steps. Your doctor will lightly start with a detailed medical history and a physical examination. Then specific blood tests are used to gauge your blood sugar and insulin levels. These include fasting plasma glucose test. This measures your blood sugar after an overnight fast. Oral glucose tolerance test. After fasting, you'll receive a glucose solution and your blood sugar levels are tested over a few hours. Hemoglobin A1C test. This gives an average blood sugar level over the past two to three months. Your doctor might also check your cholesterol and triglyceride levels, as imbalances here can be linked with insulin resistance as well. It's important to note that these tests don't directly tell whether you have insulin resistance, but they do provide critical clues. A high fasting blood sugar or a high A1C level could indicate that your body is not utilizing glucose as it should. Moreover, remember, early detection is key. If you're experiencing any of these symptoms, or if you have high risk factors like a family history of diabetes, it's a good idea to discuss testing with your healthcare provider. Catching insulin resistance early can make a world of difference in managing and potentially reversing it. Now let's talk about the most empowering part, management and prevention. There's a lot we can do to take control. Lifestyle changes are at the heart of managing and preventing insulin resistance. It starts with your diet. Opt for a balanced diet rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and lean proteins. Cutting down on highly processed foods and added sugar can significantly improve your insulin sensitivity. Next, exercise. It's a powerful tool. Regular physical activity like brisk walking for 30 minutes a day can greatly enhance your body's ability to use insulin. It doesn't have to be intense. Consistency is what matters. But it's not just about diet and exercise. Managing stress, getting adequate sleep, and avoiding tobacco and excessive alcohol are also crucial. These lifestyle modifications may collectively decrease the risk of developing insulin resistance. In some cases, medical interventions may be necessary. Medications like metformin can be prescribed to help control blood sugar levels. Always consult with your healthcare provider for personalized medical advice, especially if you've been diagnosed with prediabetes or are at a high risk. Prevention is equally important. If you're at high risk due to factors like family history or obesity, taking proactive steps can make a big difference. So whether you're managing insulin resistance or looking to prevent it, remember that small, consistent changes can lead to health improvements. It's about making healthier choices every day, staying informed, and consulting with your healthcare provider. If you found this information helpful, please consider subscribing to the Health News Channel. Don't forget to check out our other videos for more insights into your health. Your journey to a healthier you starts with staying informed. Thank you for watching, and here's to your health.